Hi, this is Francisco Maya, Doctor of Physical Therapy and Certified Canine Rehabilitation Therapist. And today, I want to talk to you about three things. One, what is canine patellar luxation and its diagnosis? Two, how do we grade patellar luxation? And three, conservative management versus surgery for those cases. The patella is a small bone that sits in front of the knee and assists with knee flexion and extension range of motion. Patellar luxation is a common condition affecting mainly small breeds where the patella slips out of its natural position. This happens due to a variety of issues, including a shallow trochlear groove, which is where the patella sits on the knee, a misalignment of the quadriceps mechanism, or excessive relaxity of the joint capsule or the tissue surrounding it. Patellar luxation occurs bilaterally in 50% of the affected dogs, with females affected more commonly than males. It is most often luxated medially, and so why it's referred to as medial patellar luxation, but it can also luxate laterally, especially in large breeds when there is a misalignment of the quadriceps mechanism. Luxating patellas also predisposes a dog to a tear of the cranial cruciate ligament which is the equivalent of the ACL in humans. At least 15 to 20 percent of dogs with luxating patellas will eventually tear the cruciate ligament, primarily due to two reasons. A luxating patella will change the biomechanics of the knee, thus putting more stress in the ligament, and a chronic luxating patella leads to arthritis, which then leads to inflammation of the joint and surrounding tissues. This inflammation can cause a breakdown of the ligaments, especially the cruciate. The diagnosis of patellar luxation is usually done by physical examination, but radiographs are often recommended to assess for degenerative changes, joint effusion, and bony conformation. A common presentation of the patient includes random hopping or skipping, reluctance to jump, atrophy along the thigh muscles, possible moderate to severe lameness, tightness of the hip flexor muscles, and compensatory changes in posture. Some breeds, like Bassets and Dash Hounds, also present with significant limb deformities that can affect the joint mechanic. Now, let's go over how we grade patellar luxation. It is divided into four grades based on the severity of the luxation itself. In the grade one, the patella can be manually luxated, but it pops back into place on its own. In the grade two luxation, the patella can be manually luxated or it luxates on its own and remains in that position until it's either manually fixed or the dog corrects it by itself by extending the knee, which is that kicking motion we described earlier as a presentation of a luxating patella. For grades 3, the patella sits outside of its groove most of the time, but it can be manually put back in place where it may stay temporarily. And finally, for grades 4, the patella sits permanently out of the groove and cannot be manually fixed. Or, if you can fix it, then it just doesn't stay in place. For the third and final part, let's discuss conservative management versus surgery for these cases. First, let me clarify that each case is different than another, and a consult with a surgeon or rehabilitation therapist is recommended to learn what options are best for your dog. However, these are some general guidelines to keep in mind when discussing your options with a professional. Generally speaking, conservative management is recommended for pets with a grade 1 or an asymptomatic grade 2 luxation. Some factors to keep in mind include frequency and severity of lameness, functional limitations, pain, comorbidities that could contraindicate surgery, and the opportunity to decrease the likelihood of the CCL tear. The main goal of surgery is to correct the faulty mechanism that led to the luxation in the first place, such as a shallow groove or misalignment of the quadriceps mechanism. There are a variety of surgical procedures that can be done based on those goals and each individual patient, and the best option should be determined by a veterinary surgeon. With conservative management, the goals would be to strengthen the quadriceps and gluteal muscles, maintain flexibility of the hip flexor, strengthen core and back muscles, and maintain the pet at a healthy weight. Weight loss needs to be included in the plan if appropriate for that pet, as research shows that each pound of extra body weight correlates to four pounds of additional force in the joints. I hope you find this information helpful. 
and thank you for listening. If you're looking for more, please visit our website www.thek9pt.com or follow us on social media.